The Labour Party conference is underway in Auckland this weekend. David Shearer's leadership woes have been the talk of political commentators and bloggers all week. His speech to party faithful this weekend is seen as crucial to his survival. But the real test will come in February when his caucus will be asked whether they endorse him as leader. Natasha Smith reports. Labour Party members will be looking forward to their newfound powers. After this weekend, it's likely they'll have much more say in decisions affecting the party, and that includes choosing Labour's next leader. We really want to have a say. We want it to be democratic. As a member, I'm very interested in having a vote on the leadership. They want to go back to the grassroots and sort of uh, rebuild the party to make it more values-focused and more about the members. In February next year, David Shearer will have to win an endorsement vote from his caucus colleagues. He'll need to gather the support of between a half and two-thirds of the caucus, depending on the outcome of this weekend's conference. That means he's got just over two months to save his leadership. There is a leadership endorsement vote in February. What will you be doing between now and then? Well, doing exactly what I'm doing now, which is being the leader of the Labour Party. That's that's my job. So you won't be doing anything to solidify the caucus vote in your favour? No, the thing I have to do is to get out and talk about the real issues that are facing New Zealand. That's the, it's jobs, it's employment, it's education. Uh, that's my job, that's the only thing I'm focused on. You don't see any need to make sure that you've got those co other caucus colleagues on board? I'm not going to be doing anything else other than focusing on what New Zealand thinks are the best and the most important things that they want me to focus on. And are you confident that endorsement vote will, will come in your favour? Absolutely. While Shearer seems confident about his leadership, his potential challenger is giving nothing away. Will you be voting for David Shearer? Uh, I'm not prepared to discuss individual remits, whatever they are. Um, uh, I'm a very strong supporter of the organisational review. Uh, I haven't formed a view on any particular matters uh, that are caucus matters and in any particular case it wouldn't be appropriate to talk about them now. Will you be working over the summer or will you be taking a break? I have no view on that but I tell you what, if my family don't see me having a good break then um, I, you know, that wouldn't be a good thing so I'll be enjoying a very nice restful summer, thank you very much. So you don't have a position you're going to take on the... Um, I haven't on given it any thought. Um, this is a, an organisational and constitutional review. As I say, I'm absolutely confident that it will lead to an empowered, a revitalised Labour Party that's ready to win in 2014. If David Shearer can't get the required support from caucus in February next year, there will be a leadership election. It's proposed that MPs will get 40% of the vote, party members will get another 40% and affiliates like the unions will get 20%. Candidates will also have to stick to new contest guidelines. That's a substantial shift of power away from elected Labour MPs to the party rank and file and the affiliated unions. Labour's New Zealand Council runs the party and its members will decide the rules of a leadership contest including how long it runs for, who gets on the party's list and what elements of policy will be debated at annual conferences. Under the changes, the party members in its council will have much more power. Jordan, how significant are the changes that are being made with the organisational review this weekend? Uh, they're very significant, opening up the leadership selection and also making policy making more widely um, done in the party are quite big shifts, they're quite big at opening up the party, making it more open to New Zealanders to have a say. So this is about the caucus and the party members actually working together to form good views and form good policies and take that back out to the public. The council's incoming members will be voted in this weekend. Nine out of 14 have a union background. Moira Coatsworth became the president of the party last year. She joined Labour in the 80s after getting involved in a campaign to stop gold mining in the Coromandel. Robert Gallagher managed David Shearer's campaign to replace Helen Clark in Mount Albert. Jordan Carter owns his own consultancy advising on internet, media and telecommunications. He describes himself as moderate left. Angus McConnell is the Dairy Workers Union Assistant Secretary. Ifu Koka has worked for the EPMU. He backed Mangani MP Sua William Seo's opposition to the gay marriage bill, saying Labour should stick to its bread and butter. Conrad Rainers is an associate at Chen Palmer as well as a journalist. Paul Chalmers is a long-time activist and union organiser. He ran for Labour in Whangarei against Phil Heatley in 2008. Jill Ovens is a long-time unionist. She was an alliance candidate in Mount Albert going up against Helen Clark in two elections. Sonia Church is a union organiser for the Nurses' Organisation.
Shane Styler is on the National Executive for the Dairy Workers Union and is the site delegate at Fonterra. Paul Tollich works for the EPMU as a senior industrial officer. Rachel Boyack is a Nelson-based organiser at First Union. She also says she's a social democrat, feminist, Christian and muso. Glenda Alexander has spent more than 20 years as a union official. She's currently an industrial advisor for the nurses' organisation. A former Christchurch Labour MP, Tim Barnett, was New Zealand's second openly gay MP. He helped found Rainbow Labour. Three MPs are on the council, David Shearer as Labour leader, Grant Robertson as deputy and Claire Curran as the caucus secretary. There will be five other members elected to sit on the council from different sector groups. In effect, what Labour is doing this weekend is transferring substantial power over policy and leadership from its MPs to its members. This will be a new Labour party at the end of the weekend.